to the outhouse and the conference on the couch. Woo! Woo! Yes, 2020, uh, panel number two, queer and anti-colonial, right? Um, this is also a PJ and I's house, um, so welcome. First Woo! Woo! Um, there's a bathroom over there in the hall. Uh, feel free to come and get food and tacos and chips and whatever you need during the talk. If you um, want to not walk in front of the panelists, you can go through the bedroom and down through the hallways. That may be a little easier way to do it. Um, any other housekeeping stuff, CJ? Uh, if anyone wants to sit on the floor, there's those. Yes. <laughs> there's some uh, poofy things to sit on. Uh, we're going to be audio recording, so just so you know. Oh. All right. Um, and so. I am actually not the curator of the conference on the couch. It is Laura Gutierrez. <laughs> but since she's also moderating today, at this beginning part, I'm going to be playing the part of Laura. <laughs> um, which is to say, right, welcome to the conference on the couch. If you haven't been here before, it's our attempt to kind of play with, fuck with the traditional conference model by creating a kind of family, intimate space for knowledge to exist in where we're talking to each other, with each other, and not at each other. Um, so it's a very conversational, kind of uh, casual format. Um, you will hear from the panelists. They'll talk about a few things, and then we'll open it up to the room for your questions and comments. Um, and take it from there. So hand it over to Laura Gutierrez. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone feeling? Good. Thanks for being here. Um, just let us know if projection is not. I, I, I don't know if I'm projecting because I'm sort of awkwardly sitting here and trying to look both at the panelists, people in front of me, and then all of you back here. So welcome to a uh, queer and anti-colonial. Um, there's actually a, a chair here. It's usually my chair, but. So um, I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about. Um, a lot about yesterday's conference on the couch and the discussion of you know the bad apple and sort of being rotten and ripe and all these um, beautiful words that we used and amazing and juicy conversation we had yesterday and um, I want that to sustain that because I don't want to lose sort of the the joy when we talk about you know sort of colonialism and slavery um, because you know we shouldn't. But I also want us, uh, want us to sort of think about and reflect on uh, the ways in which for people that have been forcibly displaced, or at least in terms of like having ha inherited that legacy of coming from you know, peoples that have been forcibly displaced and or you know, whose, whose land was stolen, um, I want us to sort of think about the ways in which that already kind of is already being brought in, you know, sort of in terms of the ways in which we are conceived of, you know, um, um, sort of in this in this hemisphere, uh, not just the U.S. Right. So we do want to sort of think about U.S. colonialism and imperialism, but of course, um, colonialism and, and imperialism, uh, you know, sort of happened uh, through this hemisphere, and you know, English, you know, is that language that has been sort of placed on us, but so has Spanish and Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, am with a group of people who, um, whose primary langu language, including myself, like my primary language is Spanish, um, even though I grew up, you know, bilingual um, from the year nine onward. But for others, English is not the dominant language, so we're all, but Spanish or and or Portuguese is sort of a, a language that was sort of uh, placed on, on them. Um, we don't want to prioritize English. So we might be sort of going into Portuguese and or Spanish at some points. I will do my best to interpret, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you all don't get it, 
Also, it's part of the. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> so that's sort of my those are my opening remarks. But I, I I'm going to now introduce uh, the people who uh, have graciously um, um, agreed to to be here with 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 us to share their knowledges and learn about their practice. Um, but also, um, I'll, I'll introduce them and I'll ask a couple of questions. But I know that other people will uh, also um, have questions. Okay, so let's start. Um, and I don't have it printed, so I have it on my phone. So I'm going to um, start with here to my immediate right, <coughs> Stokely. Um, they, he is a trickster in training, hailing from Philly by way of Boston. They create and curate performances, lectures, and space around queerness, nostalgia, the black body, and home. Their research explores black and queer performance, home <coughs> slash land, migration, uh, be, be um, parentheses, longing, and incomplete, impossible archives. Stokely is the co-founder of Unbound Bodies Collective, a multidisciplinary art labs for queer and trans black and brown artists in the Boston area and beyond, and a Hot Bits Collective curator, which we will uh, <laughs> have the pleasure of uh, seeing tomorrow uh, evening. And then here to uh, Stokely's immediate right are the collective Crudas Cubensi, <laughs> and Olivix Prendes. Um, they also go by day. Uh, and he, they are, you know, um, based here in Austin. What an amazing treasure we have here uh, with both of them. Both born and raised in uh, Cuba, studied art and began to practice artivism early in their lives. They are working class hip hop MCs, independent musicians, poets, theater performers, and uh, vegan educators. Standing up for black and Latinx feminist queers, gender nonconforming, and women, immigrants, and other intersectional beings. And then uh, on here and this wall we have, or against this wall I should say, is um, Doreen Wood, Woo! who is <laughs> <laughs> born in Echo Park, California, Los Angeles based. Uh, they also use they as a pronoun. And they use their corpulent body and distinctive voice to challenge the separation <coughs> of artist and spectator, mm -hmm. using subject matter informed by their own uh, perspective as a non-binary person of color living in these stolen lands. Mm -hmm. so, and oh, I forgot to mention that um, Crudes Currency is at, will be at the closing party uh, <coughs> at Sahara Lounge that is in. Uh, conjunction with uh, lesbian weddings. Mm -hmm. And Dorian Wood is tonight. We get to yeah. <laughs> And next to uh, Dorian is Pedra Acosta, a uh, uh, Brazilian German performance artist and visual and urban anthropologist based between Berlin and Vienna and working with queer artists internationally through the complexity and fragmented epistemologies of queer communities. Mm -hmm. Their work was has built bridges between performance art, music, video, visual art, and writing, having the body as the main medium. Mm. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And performing at also at the posting party uh, and lesbian wedding. Woo! My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I mentioned to uh, you know the, the panelists that whatever language they are comfortable with, or whatever language they want to speak, and I will try to translate um, as much as I can, all right? So um, I've been thinking a lot about um, Fargo uh, Artabiki's performance, as well as Emily Mars' performance last night, and thinking precisely about the ways in which, so for those of you that were there, um, uh, Fargo, uh, my father, my martyr, and me, post-colonial instructions for loving the Palestinian body, and M. Lamar, uh, the lynching suite. So as you can see, one is you know, discussing the, you know, the occupied lands and then the ways in which sort of um, having, having to leave and be displaced and 
living in the U.S., then being queer, and then M. Lamar's um, the lynching uh, <coughs> suite, sort of, uh, we're talking specifically about the, um, the black body and slavery and the legacies of slavery and, and lynching. So I've, I've been thinking about those two, and I can't help it. And I think that they're going to inform at least my uh, my questions in terms of thinking about. Um, again, I want to. I wa actually want to go back to something I s mentioned earlier about this idea of of as we discussed yesterday, and I know that 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 most of you weren't here, but the idea of, of the bad apple and being rotten as a queer <coughs> artist. But what does that mean when we also add, you know, being um, again, a colonized, sort of occupying a colonized body <coughs> and everybody sort of being deemed rotten because of that. Does that make sense? I wonder if you can sort of uh, speak to, to that through your work so that people can also learn a little bit about what you do and, and your practice. Does, does that make sense? See, did I miss? See? Okay. So, anyone want to? <laughs> um, um, yeah, so so first of all, thank you for everybody for being here, so I'm here now. Today is a beautiful day in Berlin, for example, where I'm based, people never could stay here, but outside in the park. <laughs> so thank you for your efforts. So Thank you outside the festival to invite me here. It's my first time <coughs> in USA. <laughs> As a original, originally person from Brazil, uh, USA, uh, so you have a, a lot of colonial fantasies about the USA, New York, and so on. <laughs> so, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, um, yeah, so like, um, my basically my whole life, so like, I, I'm, I'm on stage since uh, 25, 25 years, and um, um, it's really difficult to be an artist in the art system, and yeah. So, coming back to the question. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, I, so, I understand the, the, the motto or the, the meaning of the festival, but I think my whole life I was targeted as a person that have or had no uh, rights to be alive. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I like <coughs> or not uh, the, um, this uh, topic or world or um, about myself. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I'm still thinking about, mm -hmm. I'm still feeling. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, I, I, um, <clears throat> I feel like that's, um, very, uh, it's, it's, as Facebook said, it's complicated. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I think when we're talking about, uh, uh, like what we each do as, you know, as, as artists, it's all very, uh, <coughs> very much coming from a place of individuality and you know what we do is you know is is taken from our specific trajectories and getting to where we are and um, what I've what I've found with my own practice is the uh, just opportunities to be able to go to different places you know I, you know I've been to Berlin and um, <coughs> Uh, for example, and you know, one thing I've noticed about it, you know, a city like Berlin, from my own perspective, is that it is, uh, you know, it's, <coughs> it, it like, <coughs> I'm not like comparing necessarily to Austin, but it is like you know, this one city in a country that is so.
different from what this city is, and yet, like you know, you know, Berlin has you know has a large you know um, migrant population, and uh, therefore there seems to be more of a, a relative. Acceptance of different cultures, in my experience, has been, and even still, that is like not enough. Um, there's still, you know, a lot of conflict, and um, I, I've, you know, I've discovered, and you know, just moving through different spaces my entire life and different cultures and different countries, is that there seems to be, um, you know, anywhere there seems to be like a sense of pride over the region, and people hold on to that in a very general sense, and then the rest of us who don't necessarily partake in any sort of um, like regional pride or you know any form of patriotism, like you know we are uh, we make our own little communities, like you know, and and I've found that. Uh, that common aspect like everywhere like I always you know I every every city I go to I always look for okay like you know who's not from here because this to me is so um, is a reflection of what I feel <clears throat> the ideal world would be where we don't have to adhere to the, you know the local you know, just you know, popular elements of you know, like well, if you're gonna if you're gonna live here, if you're gonna sit at our table, then you have to, you know, be okay with this and this and mm -hmm. celebrate this. Do we don't celebrate that on Wednesdays? Like you know, we wear pink on Wednesdays type of thing. And uh, and I feel like that is you know, hopefully just uh, you know as our worldwide community because I do see it as that like you know as we're all able to be here from different places as we keep growing that mentality keeps um, keeps dying out because it, it, to me it's really it's archaic it's uh, it's hurtful it doesn't acknowledge you know the fact that like you know you take pride in a in a certain city in a certain region and what you're doing is you're not acknowledging that like well how did mm -hmm. that pride come to be in that place mm -hmm. and and you know, and ten out of ten times, a people were displaced. Yeah. A people were, you know, much much worse <clears> than displaced. <throat> and I and I feel like that's something that we should uh, ideally uh, address. And, uh, um, but it's complicated, especially when we all come from different backgrounds and. Uh, you know, at times, like you know, different uh, mixtures of of you know colonialist mm -hmm. um, influence. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pues, para mí, being queer, being black, being immigrant, being independent artist, doing hip hop here in U.S. y eh, particularmente here in this city. So, why? Um, <laughs> como me ha hecho crecer. ¿Me la traducen? <laughs> <laughs> being queer, um, being black. Um, eso lo dije. <laughs> no, eso lo dijiste. <laughs> um, it's very hard. It's very hard to be in this very a uh, white space, this Austin, being a hip hop artist, being queer being a migrant, being black. Pero al mismo tiempo, at the same time, I come from Cuba, <coughs> so Cuba is magical land, it's different. Uh, a lot of people, they have a lot of resilience. Como sí, they, they're resilient. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. espiritual, in Cuba. Muy espirituales, somos en el sentido que working with the spirit, with the orisha. So para mm -hmm. mí, para... Mm -hmm. A ver, para existir, para sobrevivir, for being here yeah. in this yeah. stolen land and white land and everything, yeah. colonial land, uh -huh. for me, for us, uh, being the people who we are, is como un mix de, de magnificent, de proud, de being awake, de being alive, mm -hmm. de working with fuerzas yeah. y 
espíritus, orichas que nos permiten mm -hmm. transitar en este mundo, ¿vale? Yeah. So working with the the sort of the spiritual, uh, the orishas of of, of Cuba um, is a way in w a vehicle from which it's easy to navigate these white uh, uh, stone lands. Mm -hmm. Yo no creo que sería easy, pero para mí I feel protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y para mí es como, for me, son como tools para fighting against the white colonialism, you know, mm -hmm. with my ancestors, with my... Mm -hmm. So, mm, para mí es importante, como I feel, como like they say, being proud, como sense of pride, mm -hmm. being here, still fighting, still struggling, but still make music. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a privilege, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bless. Mm -hmm. Because I don't wanna, because I know, I don't often, I wanna talk about the bad thing, because mm -hmm. I know through my body. I, I feel, uh, mm -hmm. put myself in posi positive thing. When I say positive, I, I wanna say, Family, community, mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. sex, mm -hmm. smoking, mm -hmm. be outside. So yeah. for mm -hmm. me, those kind of things are very, very important and very connected with my healing, with my healing mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. with my battle to no pertenecer a ningún lugar. Mm -hmm. So don't feel como rudy in any place. So it's not a, the, the, these tools that they uh, use. Um, to navigate and to survive and to thrive and to are um, not necessarily so that you know they are grounded or rooted. <coughs> it is like to feel okay to not belong. Mm -hmm. Because See? kind of mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of. Because <laughs> uh, I immigrated a well, twelve years ago from directly from Cuba. So for me, being in the, in in this world is more como. Como, como no pertenecer, o sea, I'm from Cuba, but I, I'm no belong there anymore, because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they are so different. Mm -hmm. I got my family, but at some point I said, mm, you know, ooh, too much. So, <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, I appreciate the outing because I feel, at some point, feel home, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I say, mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's a kind of limbo, but at the same time, I, I enjoy it. Because I feel como fly, you know, it, I no belong there, I no belong here, so I belong to me. So it's, it's, it's a very powerful thing. Uh, we travel a lot for, because we do music a lot, a lot. So for me, it's a bliss. Travel all the world, you know, Europe, South America, South America, speaking Spanish, doing my shit in Spanish, you know. So for me, it's... it's it's very powerful because for colonialism, I know Spanish is a colonialism language, but fuck it, you know? <laughs> so at the same time, we are here trying to explain ourselves in English. Yeah. Fuck it too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know, we try to survive, to do a work. Uh, we're looking for supporting, please, white allies, supporting immigrants, queer, independent artists, doing hip hop in this white city. So in this US world, US world, US world, yeah, we are hustling all the time because we come from Cuba. So if you have the opportunity to go to Cuba, mm, you're going to see the real shit, the real shit. So when we, when we migrate here, we feel kind of lost because here you have a lot of privilege, a yeah. lot of shit, yeah. a lot of sources. So for me, my advice is go outside this country sometime, looking for other people, other queer around the world, black queer, trans queer, different people sharing your resources. Even if you right now don't have a work, it's privilege, you know? So I really appreciate being here. I really appreciate the festival for inviting us. I really appreciate it, Laura. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Again, Austin, 
because at the end we stay here for 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I appreciate the city. I recognize that the city has something, mm -hmm. a lot of different queer, a lot of, I don't know, different. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when we are in Cuba, we miss this city a lot. So we say, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so at the end, I feel super free mm -hmm. to be in this country because mm -hmm. No sé, be, be born and raised in Cuba or another country in Latin America is is mm -hmm. very different, 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 mm -hmm. totally another movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm still in shock, you know, recognizing this this culture. Um, but I'm here being me, doing music, doing good things, trying to change myself first, uh, second the people around me. Not only shame, but affecting mutually, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. I born in Guantanamo, Cuba. Then I remember me like, since I'm a tiny child, questioning things, like, why they want me to do that if I don't want that? Mm -hmm. And why, why they saying, like, something is bad, and then they, they force me to believe that something else is true, is right. Mm -hmm. And then I was, like, playing with my girlfriend or with a girlfriend, when I was seven years old, and then the play get like tougher and tougher, and then at some point I had an orgasm at seven years old, playing with my girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is serious, yeah. <laughs> and something big is happening inside me, mm -hmm. and then, but the same that this is no kind of the right thing. Mm. Like they say a boy and a girl, and I was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Am I a boy? Mm. Or this shouldn't be hap happen, happening? And then I <coughs> step back and I say, my friend, no more. And then I get like totally frustrated. But then I, I was like, Who's like dictating this? Mm -hmm. Who's like saying like this is not right? Because I I receiving that this is not right. Mm -hmm. I know this is not right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then I start like uh, checking around me like fucked up things. They gave me like story mm -hmm. classes, history classes. Mm -hmm. I was like hell no. Mm -hmm. Then for me that was like totally like questioning like what's going on here, what 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 things like this are happening. Then I, I start like writing early in my life, like doing spoken word and stuff and then I became like a theater and um experimental theater person. Then, in, in that process, I observed like a lot of bullshit around me in the school, in Cuba, like a lot of racism, a lot of homophobia, a lot of transphobia, <coughs> a lot of classism in Cuba, because they say in Cuba we all saying hell no, mm -hmm. hell no. <coughs> We are a socialist capitalism, or le let's say socialist monarchy, mm -hmm. something like that, because it's like the, the <coughs> royal family, Castro owns everything and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know you know that. <coughs> but some people are like, no, some, some information about Cuba are like uh, manipulated, but the people in the right is true. But at the same time, Things are like going bad and bad in Cuba, for real people, for real. 
Then you can see like a lot of racism, <coughs> a lot of like colonial bullshit all the time around us. And it's like everywhere, but you, you cannot like even talk to people about that or like, it's not like Doing a conversation. A like this? No, no. And <laughs> having a conversation like this, like, no. Like questioning our own, ourselves, like <coughs> who you are, who you represent, what you're gonna do about uh, the whole thing, you know, and uh, how like we have to step back and step back and step back, like lighter skin and white and whiteino people, because we are not the priority. We are not the priority, please, not anymore. Like non-black people, we are not the priority, nor in our like art, nor in, in our like that daily basis, daily life. No, please. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for listening to me. Hi. I just have to say, first of all, that to be up here talking in front of a room of like, super fine ass queer that's like <laughs> hella intimidating <laughs> and I just want to say that because I feel like there's like something about professionalism right that goes into confer uh, conferences and panels that is so colonial and I just want to break break them to the edge. <laughs> I'm a shy queer too so um so I'm Stokely um like you said I use they and he pronouns so I am black um I'm fat I'm queer, I'm trans, um, I'm a first generation American. Um, all those things really inform me. Um, and I want to just tell them, you know, tell a, a really short kind of personal story. So when I was 16, my dad was deported um, for marijuana possession. And so I think a lot about the ways that, you know, colonialism informed that, especially um, because. The judge told him, you know, I don't understand why you people are coming into this country doing all, you know, all the kind of shit that, mm -hmm. right, that you're used to hearing. And then about 10 years later in Massachusetts, where I'm from, mm -hmm. marijuana was decriminalized and then legalized, right? And so, <laughs> right, like the, the story flipped, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was about 16, um, I really learned, um, I think I always knew, but it really solidify for me that laws, they're not meant for mm -hmm. me, they're not meant to protect people like me, mm -hmm. um, or like my father, or my family, or my community. Um, and so a lot of what I think about is, um, you know, like, like, what does legality mean? I'm looking at the hottest folks, because we had this like really intense conversation yesterday about like, we're just trying to find space and resources and thinking a lot about like, what does it mean um, to have like the law or like, uh, in Boston, at least these like puritanical values being placed on the work and being told that your work is not valid mm -hmm. because it, it doesn't fit this idea of what is moral or what is, uh, you know, upstanding or whatever. Um, so uh, the work that I do um, with Unbound Bodies Collective, which um, I'm one of five members of, and Unbound, mm -hmm. it's complicated, but Unbound Bodies is also a part of, the whole collective is a part of Hot Bits Collective, so kind of nestled in. So a lot of the work that we do is about thinking about making space for queer and trans, black and brown folks in Boston. Boston is a city that has been so, so rapidly gentrified, like that is the story in so many cities and, and towns all over. Um, and what we've noticed is that they're just like, first of all, there's um, a lot of, policing of, of black folks in public space, but also in private space. Um, you know, like what it means to be safe and black in your, like it just doesn't exist. There's like no safety for, for queer and uh, trans and black folks and brown folks. Um, so a lot of the work we do is really around like, what does it mean to gather and why? Like what does community building look like in a city that has literally the structure of the city, the laws in the city have, have uh, legalize it to kind of destroy your community, destroy your community, um, knocking down streets and neighborhoods, right? Um, and so we think about like, what does it mean to gather and how is that a super powerful radical act 
Um, and what does it mean to gather for pleasure? And why is that a super radical act? Um, creating space that is so centered around pleasure and desire and like nuanced conversations about pleasure and desire is so, so important. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's a little bit about what we do. Um, UVB on the bodies, we uh, have started these performance installations. So we've been thinking, okay, a lot of the work we do is in private, it's in homes, but what would happen if we took our work to the streets? What would happen if we like literally made a stoop, which is, you know, like, you know what a stoop is? <coughs> okay, so Boston, we don't have stoops because the, the, the architecture is like, it's like closed off, right? So we're like, okay, so what would happen if we made a stoop in public downtown in a place mm. where young black kids are constantly told to like, you know, that they're not allowed to be in that space? Um, and what would happen if we like, play some loud music and like, you know, have people doing each other's hair and like all these things, these like tender, care, caring, pleasurable things um, with each other in public. How could that change literally the energy of the space? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm gonna stop there because I know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're totally, uh, me back to growing up in Chicago and in, in the hood and like, like stoops yeah. music and you know jump rope all those things were yeah. so vital jump for rope. right <laughs> 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 um Oraima like anticipaste una de mis preguntas you know? sorry mm -hmm. no no <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking a lot about mm -hmm. sort of thinking what it means to sort of um, go back to sort of our past, you know, that, that kind of ancestral knowledge that we carry in our bodies uh, and how we can use it as a resource for, you know, sort of surviving or even in our own, um, you know, artistic or, or uh, you know, practice in general in terms of what we do to try to do, <coughs> you know, to give to the world or to try to change, you know, the ways in which things are now sort of to push back. How, you know, sort of using, you know, maybe Orishas, but also maybe, you know, our queer ancestors, yeah, yeah. like Chavela Vargas, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, I know you, we, I know, we all know now that you do, but the rest of you, um, do you draw from, from, from sort of that embodied knowledge, that ancestral, those uh, legacies, or queer ancestors to be able to, to do what you do? as, as non-binary, um, mm -hmm. brown person, uh, fat person, <coughs> and it's, I, I've learned at this point in my life to adopt uh, this whole identity package mm -hmm. that I'm so proud of as like, you know, when someone in your family says, oh, like, you know, you know, we have a child that went to college, or like mm -hmm. this one went to college, so that type of thing, so like, so I'm like, the first admitted <laughs> full yeah. package in my family and like and I, I would say even like as far back as any of us mm -hmm. can remember so um <clears throat> but there you know I, I you know i i look back and actually part of the work that i'm doing now for this uh <coughs> um i'm composing a cantata uh, that i'm putting out next year that is based on a span of 30 years of the history of my family mm -hmm. arriving from costa rica mm -hmm. to los angeles mm -hmm. and uh establishing themselves um you know trying to integrate themselves but like mm -hmm. also um you know hold on to their tradition and Mm -hmm. the struggle of that and mm -hmm. all of it culminating until uh, 1987 when uh, the, the house that they had had for 30 years uh, caught fire and burned down. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> so, so much, so this process has forced me to really, you know, just track, you know, as far back as I can, as far as like, you know, you know, where and who my family mm -hmm. has been. Mm -hmm. And something I've noticed that perhaps is common with a lot of families who are trying to assimilate into this culture is to um, to hide 
and to like you know conceal yeah. certain elements that mm -hmm. would not make it easy for us to assimilate into you know what what my family's perceived as American culture as the ideal as you know as not having to struggle as much um, in doing this type of investigation what I've noticed mostly though are you know incredibly strong uh, cis women mm -hmm. who have um, accomplished incredible things throughout yeah. our entire family's history and have had to you know hold and you know just an unthinkable amount of strength mm -hmm. in their own daily lives to not just you know survive but to like provide even more than you know than than any you know, anyone could you know mm -hmm. fathom in their own family like you know to you know, it's not just enough to put food on the table. It's got to be the best food, the best this, the best mm -hmm, that. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, these women, like, being, like, just, like, to this day, like, you know, my greatest inspiration. But then yeah. um, also discovering that there were, like, certain family members who were, you know, eccentric mm -hmm. or strange or, like, you know, the M word that's used to, ref you know, refer to um, homosexual men. Um, mm -hmm and hearing about that my entire life, but now being able to dig deeper and yeah. see something mm -hmm. that is um, that is way more heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. So, um, in amassing all of this information, uh, I, I certainly use it to feed my own practice, and um, but to even investigate, <coughs> excuse me, further into um, into where it is that they got their strength mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and just you know really dig like you know as far as far back as possible and mm -hmm. uh, you know the I feel like these times that we're in like you know we we hold the burden of you know having to represent where we're from mm -hmm. um, along with the burden of becoming these ancestors for other people mm -hmm. for generations that are still to come like we're living through times I feel that are <clears throat> taking us to places that are you know that it's unprecedented what we are accomplishing right now and, and you know here in the United States and all parts of the world this is to me like part of the experience of being a touring artist is that I go to you know I, 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 I've been to Spain like many times and each time I find you know, like last time I was there, I you know I encountered a community of of, of Dominicans mm -hmm. that were living in this town called Saragossa, and I met this woman who um, her name is Dila, and she's like such an inspiration. Like twenty years ago, she went there by herself, fleeing horrible conditions and abusive husband to um, to start a life that she wanted. <laughs> and little by little over um, 20 years she brought her entire family mm -hmm. to Saragossa and now her children have their own businesses mm -hmm. and they have their own communities their own events and I was just you know, I, I was enthralled and inspired to hear her story and like mm -hmm. um, and knowing that in you know in hearing stories and sharing stories you know I feel like you know what we consider community is like for many of us is what family is mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what that means is that we share in many ways you know the, the capacity to draw inspiration from ancestors mm -hmm. that perhaps are not of our own blood lineage yeah. but you know like Chavela Vargas mm -hmm. for example like you know is from Costa Rica as well as my family and yet my <coughs> my own family makes a distinction away from her because she left Costa Rica yeah. Um, and it's this really strange disconnect where you like you know we're all like in the same you know working class pot and yet somehow we can still hold on to a, this delusional privilege of patriotism that only hurts us it only hurts us and so you know the fact that Chavela Vargas you know was queer and was an immigrant to like you know enormous worldwide communities that are so marginalized to this day and yet she is worshipped i mean to me it's like people who stand against these two things are incredible hypocrites because she represented both those things she lived her life that she wanted to live 
And I, of course, I draw inspiration from Chavela Vargas, like, you know, in so many ways, the boldness for, like, in the times that she was popular, to be who she was, to be as popular as she was, and to reach people in such a way, you know, this to me is like, well, you know, I feel that me being who I am, I can consider her as one of my ancestors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we may, like, you know, through many separations, share, like, a blood lineage, but to me, it's like, there's a part of me that feels like, you know, fuck blood. Yeah. Mm. It's like, you know, it, we are at this point so beyond, yeah. you know, the, the essence of that. Yeah. There's a, you know, we can take a pride, but never in a way that says, well, my blood lineage is better yeah. than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, that's, there's always a fine line for that. Mm -hmm. And I know that certainly the people I consider family, like, we don't share blood, but we share yeah. everything else. And that's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I think the colonial project uh, erased our, or oh mine, sorry, um, history of family, like the tree. How, can, how do they say yeah. in English the tree of mm -hmm. families tree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but if you <coughs> see my mother's side family from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, uh, you see that um, my, uh, this part of the family is like a mi mi mixed race, mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> her family has. Um, spiritual heritage that I got it not not because now I'm a witch mm. not this kind of trendy thing in the queer communities nowadays but because I the spirits they choose me to have this kind of thing so for me what you call spirituality for me I call knowledge and with this knowledge I'm here to destroy your minds and your beliefs <laughs> and your academic <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's because of the history of the epistemicide, the genocide of epistemologies, and I don't accept mm. it anymore. Mm. Yes. yes. Thank yes. you. And <laughs> I love to talk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, from my uh, father's uh, side, uh, from northeast of Brazil, uh, Pernambuco, is the name of the state. Um, he, so I have this uh, uh, mixed race uh, uh, family as well, but from the indigenous side. And if you see the picture of my grandfather, you see like people in Germany like. Uh, Ah, he's Filipino, it's like a bitch, no, so like, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but I don't know, like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I studied anthropology, I was looking for my roots, but it's impossible to, to go there, yeah. it's impossible, so, uh, what saved my ass is like my connection in these things that I'm developing that I call invisible knowledge. Mm -hmm. And like I receive uh, information and formation from the spirit of Umbanda. Umbanda is a religion, a mixed religion, somehow as Santeria or many different names like that you have in the whole America continent. Mm -hmm. So I don't call America USA, I call America, uh, well. Yeah. What it is? What it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we have different names, so like, yeah, in different language that's not Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese or, or, or Spanish or English, so. Uh, yeah, and, um, yeah, so like my first school was the Umbanda, like the religion, because my mother took me to this religion because to to go into the process of cleaning and 
I was a sad, you know, like a <laughs> depressive uh, child, this kind of things. So my father is military and uh, from the Marine, and he's a support of the dictado uh, military dictatorship in Brazil. So uh, he's... <laughs> Uh, he's a uh, support of the president in Brazil right now, so like, he's, uh, was a bit <laughs> Bolsonaro, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and he has gone at home, so like my, since my first memory of like when I was two, was a queer phobia and never stopped because of this I migrated to Germany because I found this like queer community and so on. But when I came to Berlin, like the white queers was like, ah, you don't speak in English, or and you don't speak German, you cannot live with us. But then I was like, bitch, I, I'm looking for a room, you know. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to survive. I mean, you know, I just jumped it from Brazil to Berlin without wow. anything, speaking only Portuguese. And so, like, do you know, I want a better life, like, not only in this way, but more. So, and then I studied with Grada Quilomba, she, mm. right, mm. I see you, <laughs> yeah, and Grada Quilomba, uh, please take note, Grada Quilomba, uh, she saved my ass as well, <laughs> like, people save my ass uh, every day. <laughs> And after the two seminars with her, uh, we created a group in Berlin that calls uh, Black Indigenous and People of Color Intertrans Queer, and we destroyed the whole white queer scene in, in Berlin. <laughs> 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 so, um, um, yeah, and so like, and I was. Um, with different communities in, in Barcelona, for example, and in Vienna as well, we have like um, um, communities, um, black indigenous people of color, this trans queer as well, and yeah, and immigrants, of course, and so on. But I think there is something that's hurt me a lot is when you don't make your homework, your homework is <laughs> to uh, realize how you incorporate and how you reproduce your imperialistic shit, like in the case of USA, mm -hmm. or in Germany, for example, in Europe in general, like your colonial subjectivity. Mm -hmm. So because we here have to make our homework every day because you don't have choice. So, make your homework. Yes, and <coughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I can speak briefly to that. I'm so glad that you said Grada Colomba because um, she has a book called Plantation Memories. Um, and so, thinking about ancestors, one ancestor that I'm working with who is not an you know, of blood, um, is Esclava Anastasia, um, mm -hmm. Slave Anastasia. Um, and there's a whole, I would love to talk to y'all about that at some other point, because um, there's a whole history about this this person who was forced to wear this mask on her, yeah. on her mouth for her life. Anyways, so, um, but in terms of ancestors, I think, uh, to answer your question, yes. I think uh, a lot about ancestors, um, both with unbound bodies, um, and I think Hot Bits is also really great about thinking about, we've started talking a little bit about space. Um, and I'm gonna make a, a it's so funny you guys y'all here. I'm gonna make a, um, a big claim and say, like, I'm thinking, starting to think about space as ancestors. Like, uh, we've been thinking about, like, porn theaters and spaces that have been closed down. Um, so in my, like, nine to five, I personally work at a, a big theater that like in, in its history, um, these spaces were porn theaters too before they were closed mm -hmm. down and the city mm -hmm. sold it to the institution for a dollar, mm -hmm. right? To, to like upkeep it. Mm -hmm. And then that meant that like individual artists like us can't even access those spaces. So um, 
we also think a lot about legacy. Um, and mm -hmm. so, uh, not ancestors, but elders in the community, people who are doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, so last mm -hmm. year, um, Philly uh, paid uh, homage to Samuel Delaney, um, and uh, Baltimore paid homage to Ignacio Rivera. Um, so that's been amazing. Um, I think with Unbound Bodies, uh, the way that we've thought about legacy and ancestors um, as it relates to, to Hot Bits in Boston is thinking about like, just asking the question of who isn't here and why, um, mm -hmm. and what does that mean for the work that we show. So in Boston, um, we only show QT BIPOC films, films with QT BIPOC yeah. folk in them. Yeah. Um, and that was a really intentional um, choice mm -hmm. because QT BIPOC folk are being erased in Boston, right? So um, that's a little bit what we've been thinking about and playing with and yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, for me, definitely yes. Uh -huh. I work with everything, with my ancestors, with my food, with drinking with everything. Uh -huh. Um como I don't know, in Cuba all that Yoruba religion is very rooted, is very cultural thing. Mm -hmm. So let's say here is not so much. Here is more mm -hmm. Christianism, Catholicism. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> the cosmovision of the people mm -hmm. over there, even when we migrate, mm -hmm. is still with us, I think, mm -hmm. because it sounds, desde que uno nace, como mostly black people, now, como todo está gentrified, mm -hmm. más white people practicing religion. Mm -hmm. Pero para mí, eh, being queer, being, let's say, different, different role model to practicing the heterodox way, mm -hmm to be a practitioner of the religion, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. very homophobic, very transphobic, very yeah. mm -hmm. everything. But at the end, it's como how to recreate your mm -hmm. own spirituality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's 2020 mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. We are different people from our ancestors, yes. some yes. of them. Mm -hmm. And we need to recreate how yeah. mm -hmm. we believe, what we believe. Como not only let's say orisha mm. or forces or you know how we believe in people, mm -hmm. how we mm -hmm. um, nos relacionamos con las personas, cómo hacemos community, cómo hacemos familia. Sí. Para mí eso es es for me is something spiritual too. Mm -hmm. It's not that simple, you know. It's como something well intentional, well como okay, mm -hmm. let's doing the shit, let's mm -hmm. make the shit, you know, it's como, como, para mí es como tener un propósito, mm -hmm. give, tener un propósito, mm -hmm. um, a ver cómo decir, un propósito mágico, mm -hmm. un magic purpose de change everything around me, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think we are so set in the routine, in the randomness, mm -hmm. I think in that way. So yo pienso que nuestras existencias, que nuestras existencias en combinación con las fuerzas, nuestras existencias. Our resistance is, is sort of based on like our... En combinación con la, con la tierra, con las cosas naturales, con qué nos comemos, yeah. con qué nos metemos. Mm -hmm. So it's in combination with what we eat, the, what comes from the land, what's around us, the cosmovision. Que droga nos metemos. Que what drugs we take. <laughs> como, know. con cuantas, como, que sexo hacemos, con cuanta gente, con cuanta. Sex with people, who we have sex with, how many, like that's all part of. Todo eso es como una concatenation de, de pa, a, para yeah. mí, de spirituality que luego pongo en la música, en my way of being, en, yeah. en, en estar, en existir. Yeah. Y para mí, Toda esa como coraza. Yeah. So it's sort of a, an umbrella of like things. Coraza is a beautiful word. What is it? It's like a coraza. O amadura. Harm. Como, como se dice amadura? Armor. Like what, the armor, what's... what's yeah. mm -hmm. But it's like what animals have. A coraza is like the shell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mantle. The mantle. Yeah. Anyway, so this thing, that the armor, whatever I carry with me, the, all of that is 
pues todo eso me permite a mí como navegar, let's say, satisfactoriamente yeah. en el mundo y, mm -hmm. y at some point with, with negativity thing, discriminatory thing, racist thing come to me, um, for me that coraza me da un strange para realize yeah. I'm magic, I'm flamboyant, no, yeah. today bitch, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, <Yeah>. fly. <laughs> so the armor and that coraza actually helps you sort of uh, keep keep away what you know all the sort of isms that yeah yeah about it. yeah so not today bitch <laughs> I I appreciate you having me today yeah and thank you everybody for being here remember we are three last Cubans so I'm kind of questioning me like uh, it was my I mean my ancestors doing right and I kind of deromanticizing the white appreciation for white ancestry mm -hmm. and I think like my mom is a 80 years old and I still like no mom that's racist mm -hmm. that's bullshit and mm -hmm. she's like sick she has like mm -hmm. pancreatic cancer and she's very very sick mm -hmm. but I still like no mom no mm -hmm. it's not like that mm -hmm. and I think like <coughs> it's up like who mm -hmm. your ancestors yeah. Yeah. are so fuck your racist grandma. I um I have other questions, but I actually I'm gonna stop because I know all of them uh, individually. I can ask them later, but I I, I want to have the opportunity to uh, open it up and have you all. Um, get in, in the conversation uh, to continue to break with the, the conference thing that is so much about, you know, just the experts speaking to you, you know, they're not experts. We don't want that, of course, here. So let's open it up for conversation, questions, comments from all of you to these amazing people. Uh, so I, I would like to say something. Like sure. uh, I was in, um, is a, I was in Vienna in a dance festival. They invited me to talk about cultural appropriation. That at the end I didn't talk about cultural appropriation because you know, do you know, it's like you go and do your homework. So like it's not, do you know. <laughs> but thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the money. <laughs> 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 but yeah, and one one person like one queer feminist, <coughs> white Austrian woman, asked me and about us, not like, and our uh, uh, ancestors and our uh, what you have to to do as a witchcraft and so like how you have to do you know like to believe because so we don't have like the line age and so this kind of thing so whatever but she was she was asking like how to have uh, this kind of knowledge but without the cultural appropriation like if you are, for example if you are white german or uh, austrian as her as uh, the, the this person she cannot like take the, the beliefs of Orishas and the whole, for example, she cannot be like, I now I'm from this religion because I like and so on, so on, so on. Mm -hmm. It's not up to her, but up the Orishas and the spirits that invite to it. Because it's a lot of, it's a different way, so. But I said like, um, look at, uh, you like beer? I asked her, you like beer? And she said, I like beer. <laughs> 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 yeah, and um, um, yeah, and I said, look at your ancestors, the witches from the north of Europe, like, 
they create the beer and then the colonial project took the beer from them and killed them and so on so on so like go to this place yeah. And she was like in shock, like, oh my gosh, like I make your own beer, invite your friends, to, <laughs> do you know, to, 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 to drink together and to make your own rituals naked or whatever. You know, it's, like, it's by intuition as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, is, there is in a book, yeah. do you know, it's like that, a different kind of yeah. knowledge. So, well, so just. Um, no, no, that's a great anecdote. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Make our own beer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Questions? <laughs> now or never. <laughs> oh yeah, I do have a question. So, um, uh, for those who do express yourselves through music, um, what led you to that medium? Like mm. what? Uh, how, uh, what connected you to that medium as mm. your main means of expression? Mm. Um, <clears throat> well, my grandfather uh, uh, was uh, a Nicaraguan pianist, and mm -hmm. he moved to Costa Rica uh, from Nicaragua, and he, he made a name for himself in Costa Rica playing in just various jazz ensembles. <coughs> Excuse me. And then he... Uh, at one point, moved his family, um, his three daughters, and his wife to uh, to New York, and he he played like you know in, in several ensembles there as well, and then they moved to Los Angeles, and he was trying to get that same type of work, but because he was already in his forties, uh, and his dream was to uh, not perform out as much, but instead teach music, he was trying to. Um, to get a job working at, uh, at uh, USC, University of Southern California, uh, as a music professor, but they asked him to, like in order to do that, he needed to be accredited and take a series of, of courses. <clears throat> and he's like, well, I have all this certification already from Costa Rica, and they're like, that's not enough, because why would it be? Um, and you know, because years of performing and like you know, an actual full-on proof that he is capable of being a professor um, within the you know you, you know American academic system, you're like you know, you still need to like you know jump through all these bureaucratic loopholes that to me are still so evident about just keeping a certain type of people um, out of uh, crucial positions. So they gave him the option: you can either be a janitor. Mm. Or you can work in the mail room, and he said, "Well, I'm not going to be a janitor, so I will work, will work in the mail room." And you know, and he worked in that mail room for 30 years, and he took and he took he took immense pride in it, though, which was um, again like I feel like him really so desperately wanted to assimilate into uh, American culture, and but you know he was so good at it, you know, because you know he's you know, very intelligent human being, um, but <clears throat> he also, um, he also really wanted to, you know, provide for his family, <clears throat> and, um, and because piano, uh, came to me very early, you know, and, uh, he wanted to give me that opportunity to, um, to carry on that, that, that music, so he started teaching me piano at age five, and I had my first... Um, I had my first piano concerto at age five at, at USC. And he, oh, wow. and he made that, you know, and that was his dream, and he was so, um, he was so proud. Um, and like I, I, I recently received like a bunch of stuff that he had saved. He had, uh, he had saved the scrapbook of uh, my report cards and drawings when I was a kid, and like you know, we discovered it recently. He passed away um, two years ago at. Um, um, 103. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I discovered that uh, he had like amassed all this, um, all this stuff that I had no idea that he had, and one of them was um, the flyer, like the, from when I performed at age five. And uh, so of course it was, um, um, it was very meaningful that he wanted this um, so badly for me, and you know just. 
and like you know throughout life like you know he he um he really pushed me to do it and the the flip side to all of this though is that my grandfather was also an incredibly um problematic person he was uh incredible misogynist and homophobe um who even up until his um his last couple of years like you know really was incredibly abusive to my mother and my grandmother and my sisters uh, but always held on to the image of me as a little boy uh, to call me and like proclaim all the time that I was his favorite because that little boy was his favorite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was like the one that he could mold into something but like as I as I grew up and started like you know you know creating my own like music style and you know when I you know, you know married my husband like you know he just he refused to see that and instead on top of his piano always had this picture of me as a ba as a chubby little boy and that's what he remembered and that's who he wanted me to be so it was really difficult for me to to find him to be in any form endearing um, especially those last few years when he was just particularly really really horrible um, to the people I, I love and so much and I'm inspired by so much and um, so it's it's complicated in that, like, he, you know, as, you know, as, as a migrant, like, you know, really sought the best for his family, and that was, like, in his nature, and he really did, like, you know, help us all financially, but also, in order for me to really be able to move forward, I have to see him also as a victim of misogyny, mm -hmm. in that he was taught his entire life to be the king of the castle. <laughs> Bless you. And that he, you know, <clears throat> and it's, it's a very cultural thing, like, you know, where men can't cry, men can't show emotion, men can't be there for the, you know, you know for the ch their children's, you know, just upbringing. They have to be out working. So they can't partake in any emotional interaction with their children because they have to provide. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when he reached a point where he could no longer do that, when he was... He just wasn't capable of taking care of himself. He lashed out at the women who were taking care of him. And, you know, just violently, you know, calling them horrible names, calling the police on them several times. It was really, really a nightmare for my mother and my grandmother. So it's difficult when, like, you know, my the catalyst for me making music, my biggest musical inspiration is also, you know, such a horrible person in so many ways, but again, like, I have to be able to see as just, bless you, as um, the huge disease that is, um, that is misogyny in this world, and how much of a symptom that is to colonialism. Um, how, like, you know, so many people fall victim to that, like, you know, in all, on all sides, and how we just need to keep calling it out, and that no one's a legacy is you know, anyone who's ever partaken in that, like, you know, their legacy can never be clean and can never be straightforward. You know, like, I to, I feel so strongly about that, like, you know, and slightly off topic, like, you know, I know, like, Kobe Bryant was very important to a lot of people, but mm -hmm. I can't deny the fact that he admitted very publicly to raping a woman. Mm -hmm. And that now, like, people all of a sudden who are so quick to you know overlook the laws mm -hmm. of like you know of this country and see them as uh, you know as archaic and you know and <coughs> and not just like you know all of a sudden say well like you know he but the courts didn't find anything and it was dismissed blah 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 I'm like no he he put it out there mm -hmm. and he somehow found a way of being mm -hmm. you know exonerated by the people by mm -hmm. so many people mm -hmm. and this to me is such it is such a tragedy of not just our times at all times and yeah. <clears throat> this to me like again is part of why I see us as the new ancestors because we carry this knowledge that you know generations after us need to know like where we stand on things mm -hmm. that we call this shit out over and over mm -hmm. and you know despite what you know what it does for us creatively as individuals um, mm -hmm. There are certain things that are just absolutely not right, no matter who you are. 
So that mm-hmm. to me is mm-hmm. yeah. is when you know when I say complicated, I mean it's not complicated mm-hmm. to call you know to call it misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, um, racism. It's it's ne- it's it's unforgivable, and it's it needs to be called out every single time, no matter who you are. La pregunta es qué es lo que te llevó a hacer la música como tu práctica para para echar para vehículos. So for me, I think my mom and my grandmother was all around singing. She wanted to be opera singing opera. For me, was okay. You are black, so. So she always was singing and singing, always putting uh, records. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think even for the religion, a lot of a lot of singing there, singing to Orisha night for night, como mucho tiempo. So for me, uh, I think it's in the air. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in Cuba, is 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 so alive. We got not a lot of things, but we yes. got music. Mm-hmm. We got music for mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's mm-hmm. in the blood, in the air. So for me, doing hip hop uh, is a different thing because the government say hip hop from US. So he buy kind of mm-hmm. not accepting because it's music from the imperialism, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but at the same time they are setting music from Spain, for Russia, for <laughs> white culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the the you do hip hop at, at that at that time in Cuba was mostly black people, so the government get scared, get envy, get jealousy, get. <laughs> <coughs> confronting, get everything. So um, I don't know. I think I like the difficult thing mm-hmm. to be alive. So I decide in uh, 1998 <laughs> <laughs> to make crew a coincid, a hip hop group. Um, so at that time it was super, super misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, super uh, black power, but at the same time super, you know, so for me it was a challenge, but at the same time it was kind of my, my path, my element. So I don't know, I love everything who contains you know, music, theater, be creative. Be creative for me is kind of healing. Mm-hmm. It is it's my element. It's when I feel good, when I feel mm-hmm. como plena, plena, plenty, full, full mm-hmm. regenerated. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I feel like did it is everything and then music is like another beyond that Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean beyond that Mm -hmm. for me like music is sublime Mm -hmm. it's like (coughs) spiritual Mm -hmm. is I don't know intense it's like something you cannot touch but it's over there always mm. in the car <laughs> in the traffic right <laughs> <laughs> so for me it's like uh, very accessible for a lot of people the yeah. music mm-hmm. and then it's not like theater theater is like sometimes an elitist art and I don't like that I like like something is going everywhere and it's like for everybody. So mm-hmm. maybe because I born and raised in a socialist country, <laughs> saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love like how like the art, my art, 
It's like going everywhere for everybody, like DC. And also, my mom, she was singing <laughs> to me all the time. <laughs> and then in Cuba, we love hip hop, like since the beginning. And then we like so flowing all the time, you know, every day in our life. And then what to do with all of that, like flow and grace yeah. and you know, swag, like, and the music at the same time. Mm -hmm. So hip hop, rap, Oda thank you. No. no more question. You're hungry, more right? Questions. <laughs> <laughs> more questions. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. So I'm wondering um, how you all engage queerness in anti-racist and anti-colonial ways, right? We have this word in English, queer, right, which doesn't always translate or brings with it, um, you know, a sort of English perspective. And I'm curious, like, in what ways are you able to appropriate, identify, disidentify, and talk about queerness, right, from your different perspectives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go through? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Go through. Go through. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, because because uh, before I was nervous, I was not able to eat something, but now I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting more like calm and relaxed. And, like, and, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if I get everything that you ask, but for me it doesn't matter. It's like, do you know to understand everything? Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so like, uh, I think I have two things to, to, that I have to say today. One is about queerness or queer, the, the, the term queer. Mm -hmm. And another one is about Carmen Miranda mm -hmm. in the, that's in connection with the festival, about fruits and this kind of thing. So, yeah. Uh, in 2006, I started to talk about queer and to have this project that I will show on Sunday, please come. Uh, yeah, and so, um, um, yeah, but the new generation, or like my daughters, <laughs> uh, it's queer family, no? My daughter, daughters, and, and siblings, they call mm -hmm. siblings, and like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, yeah, siblings, siblings. yeah, family, so, queer family in Brazil. So they are super, super radical, like, mm -hmm. do you know, if I was before, because today I'm, I'm sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so they are like, they are in the front of the, do you know, like, of the war, right? Because everybody today is talking about apocalypse and the uh, 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 glo uh, global warming and this kind of things. Like we say, we from Brazil, uh, we say that we born and we, be, we are being raised, <coughs> raised and we grew up in the apocalypse. Mm. Like mm. the apocalypse for us is like the destruction of white supremacy. This is the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. So for us, it will be amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> and we are here for this shit. <laughs> so, queer for us, like in the, the last uh, five years or six years or so, um, my queer family, my Brazilian queer family are developing a lot of thoughts and writing and, and, and artworks and music and uh, videos and so on, so on, so on. And we uh, refuse the queer term because this term came 
uh, is a colonial position. Mm. Uh, is that the how 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 I don't know how to say in English caravel, the ship the big ships that came in the caravel the cruise ship. No, the the, the caravel you know, caravel. Oh yeah, um, yeah. What are they called? Carabas, yeah. Carabas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's like queer for us came as a caravel. So mm -hmm. wow. we don't accept anymore this term. Mm -hmm. I, I use queer in the global uh, mm -hmm. north mm -hmm. for being understanding, but it's not <laughs> myself. Non-binary is not for me. Mm -hmm. Do you know this kind of term is not for me? So like, I, do you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Man, woman, like, it's not for me. Sorry, not sorry. Do you know? <laughs> I just help you to say, I am queer and non binary or something like that. But yeah, but it's not for me. I don't mm -hmm. feel into this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the situation now in Brazil. So, um, yeah. Uh, in About Carmen Miranda. There is a, uh, uh, you know who is Carmen Miranda, or who was Carmen Miranda? Mm -hmm. You know, no, no, you know, you know. Si, yo sé, pero explica cierta gente. Dale. <laughs> so Carmen Miranda was a singer, uh, so famous, famous in Brazil. And um, in the time, in the period of the Second War, uh, she was like the face of Brazil, no, like she was. But she's originally from Portugal, that we have a historical big problem with this country. Mm -hmm. So, and how Carmen Miranda is the face of Brazil, do you know, and not the people making samba, in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, for example, mm -hmm. like black people, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. do you know? So, she as a woman, white, um, heteronormative and so on, so on, so like, and she had this kind of like as, um, how is the, the, the woman from USA, I like the, Mary Morrow. Mm -hmm. She was like, mm -hmm. it's not Brazilian. simple, it's not one, do you she know? Had the, the, she was the Brazilian bombshell. Mm -hmm. Exactly, she was made it by the, the industry, yeah. or art industry, or film industry, yeah. and so on. At the same time, she was playing with a lot of cultural appropriation from, uh, 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 from black cultures, <coughs> Brazilian black cultures, and so on, black people, and so on. So, and at the same time, she was um, in the game of the Second War with Hollywood to make a lot of films and was a kind of toy, I'm sorry, but I don't know another, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but yeah. Was a kind of toy in this game of the Second War to make connection with uh, USA and Brazil <coughs> and so on. So like, mm. how I am the Brazilian person in the festival, I think I have to say something like this. It's not deep, my, my critical here is not deep because I don't have time and I have to to, to give a class about this, mm -hmm. but m maybe next year <laughs> <laughs> I can come to give a class about Kame uh, Miranda. But at the same time, she's, she's, uh, my pleasure. <laughs> she is, she, she is, or she was a reference for drag queens yeah. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. at the same time. Do you know, it's like, it's not only one way. Do you know, why, why, why uh, queens or what? Drag queens. White or black? Oh, uh, everybody. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Brazil, you know, it's like, yeah. 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 So, like. Yeah, I think that's. Um, that it, oh, God. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it's, you know, everything you said is. Um, is you know, I agree with like you know the term queer. It is something that I feel like we've adopted as a way of defiance, but also, you know, we can't deny the fact that it was a term that was invented for us, and you know, so, mm -hmm. and us to you know using that term and you know in defiance also means that we are somehow appeasing the heteronormative uh, world, mm -hmm. and just you know, making a distinction from just being gay. Mm -hmm. um, 
so like so then what is a term and I feel like do we need terms I mean is it possible to live in a community where we don't have to adhere to terms in order for us to respect and and love each other and I feel that outsider is a resounding yes to that yes because I feel like we're all here and you know I don't I'm not preoccupied in any way as to like you know what to call anyone other than like mm -hmm. their name <laughs> um, and even then like you know if nobody wants to share that like you know why does that make anyone less or worse than anyone um, I had an experience in Espino in Portugal um, where um, I've been there a couple of times and I have uh, I've heard like there is this you know a, an anti-Brazilian sentiment that is at times um, very public and other times just very, like, you know, the type of like, you know, well, I have nothing against Brazil, but, you know. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But I was in Espino and they invited me to perform and they, um, the, the promoter after the performance told me like, you know, oh, that was wonderful, thank you so much. But then, um, he told my promoters that, like, you know, yeah, it's going to be difficult to bring Dorian back because people were afraid of Dorian. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, okay, all right. So I clearly did my job. Um, <laughs> and I got paid to do my job. So I went home with their fear money. Um, <laughs> But uh, that to me is like, again, like this is like, you know, um, if we are the apocalypse, you know, um, you know, you know, we, okay, you know, set out the red carpet. If you don't, then we will do it ourselves. Yes. Oh. And this is like, I feel, <laughs> I certainly do this in my own, you know, in my own work, like, you know, as much as possible. Like I'm actually... Um, <laughs> I'm actually going on tour uh, in Spain tomorrow for a couple of weeks. <laughs> but um, what I was telling Laura the other night is that, you know, the type of performance that I give in Spain is very, very, very different than anything mm -hmm. I do here mm -hmm. and anything I do anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And in the sense that in between each song is a lecture. And I'm like, oh, you all paid to see me? Like, you know, there's a stage, there's an audience. This is a class now mm -hmm. in how to treat people of my community, how to treat people that are so different from your own white patriotism right here, because that is like, Spain is just, you know, neck deep in yeah. that, you know, colonial patriotism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really terrible because there, you know, there's so many working class people who are enduring, you know, just <clears throat> difficulty and like expressing themselves and, you know, just, and surviving because, like, you know, the, right now there's, like, a ultra-right-wing government that is just taking things back, like, you know, like, centuries. But um, but they've had, like, a series of elections recently. And so, like, in between each song, I tell them, like, you know, like, I know you, our times are tough for you, but you also have the privilege of being able to vote. Uh -huh. So I, not, I'm not asking you, I am demanding of you that when you go in and vote, you take into consideration the migrant population, mm -hmm. the you know, you know what, to appease them, the queer and trans population, mm -hmm. because you know, even though you are all struggling, we struggle even more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and if you are not taking into consideration, like you know, these human beings who, mm -hmm. you know, by definition of being in Spain are also Spaniards, mm -hmm. then like you know, your patriotism is bullshit. Mm -hmm. On any level, patriotism to me is like bullshit. Like, you know, it's like, you know, like it's, you know, it's a facade. It means absolutely nothing. If you're dirt poor and you believe that your country's the best, then you are just shooting yourself in the face. Um, if you're not standing up for your community, like, you know, and, you know, just because you feel like the country that you're from, that you're in is telling you that that's not the right thing, then you are, it, it's, to me, it's just really like, the infection, the horrible infection of colonialism and what it does to absolutely all, you know, all classes of people. I communicate this through music, and I, I, um, I love sharing music. I love engaging people with music uh, because it's, in the end, like you know, an excuse for everyone to come together and celebrate something. Mm -hmm. But that 
I take into consideration how it's done anywhere I go. And anywhere I am, there is going to be a privilege in the audience. Mm -hmm. And I always have to, like, I feel like I need to really address mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if it's just about, um, like, the other day, like, some radio station in Spain, you know, said that, like, after I told them in my press kit that I identify as non-binary, they called me a transsexual. Oh, Jesus. Um, like they just like threw it out there like in the radio and <laughs> and praising me and saying that this was like a positive. And I, I emailed them back and I'm like, no, you you know, you think you were doing me a favor, but your terms are inaccurate. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, and then they also put you know they also poked fun of my body weight, which is like great, wonderful. Um, so I told them, and this also has nothing to do with my music, the fact that you think that I'm just like thicker than this other musician you're comparing me to. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the music, and I don't know who your audience is, but I guarantee you that what you're saying is influencing and perpetuating a problem that mm -hmm. keeps people like me, yeah. you know, having to fucking struggle every yeah. fucking mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So I take all of this to Spain. I, you know, mm -hmm. I, and, I, and I show them, I teach them, I, you know, I push them. But I also show them, I'm like, you know, I'm fat, I'm brown, I am not like, you know, I'm not by any term gay or, you know, I'm, you know, I am an individual like standing in front of you and that should really be good enough for mm -hmm. anyone. If you yeah. like what I'm doing musically, then you also need to fucking buy into this because it's, yeah. it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use queer, I like it. Yeah. Um because de donde vengo es como gay, lesbiana, trans people, como más reciente recently, pero yo soy gay and lesbiana. So Yo me identifico más como, como queer y cuando me migré to here, for me, es como, ok, I'm queer, you know? Es como, like you say, it's easy to identify, to translate myself to other people. Um, I don't know, tú hablaste algo de cultural appropriation, ¿no? Sí. So, uf, being in the music world, underground music world, feminist music world, o queer, whatever, is so easily, uh, so cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. If for me sometimes I'm struggling a lot. Uh, sometimes I just salgo de mi casa cuando voy a play my music. Algunos shows de algunos colegas, de algunos friends, pero the cultural appropriation is all over. Mm -hmm. All over. So mm -hmm. we don't have the time <coughs> to explain and try to, or, or calling out every people, mm -hmm. you know, como a lot of, let's say, let's do to the Latin American context. Mm -hmm. A lot of white Latin American, white Tinos, mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. black music, and people are praising, like, no sé, J. Lo, Shakira, everybody was, oh, in the Super Bowl, <laughs> for them. <laughs> <laughs> o sea, no, black, black, Latino people, black Latino people are here, since the beginning, we are doing music, we are, como se dice, levantado, Latin America, not only Latin America, black people sostiene the world, mm -hmm. todo, la música, la cultura, everything. So for me, talk about cultural appropriation is, is, I don't know, mm, because I'm doing a lot of work against that, mm -hmm. especially here in Germany, in Spain, when we go on tour, it's super, sometimes it's super hard because it's Europe, it's racist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in Berlin, we were doing a show and we was organizing a show with some cutie pack collective and we said the rules was powerful. So they say, okay, so if the white people wanna come to the concert, they need to wait until the the place is full mm -hmm. with black people and immigrant people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If white people want to came, if they got locks and <laughs> expansion, <laughs> and, <laughs> and expansion, mm, they need to cut it or cover. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so 
the crew <laughs> organizing the show, they say, okay, uh, some white, white alight. Yeah, yeah, me, me. <laughs> so, no in the door, no with the money, just in the restroom and cleaning the space. Mm. You know? <clears throat> so, for me, ah, so, ahora el concierto, in front, just black people and immigrants. White mm -hmm. people against the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, for me, that was radical. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. como, yes. We need to do that everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere. In Spain, in Germany, here in US, mm -hmm. in Austin with intention because it's hard. It's hard being a black person, a queer black person, a immigrant from, from Cuba navigating in this fantastic world mm -hmm. and keep flying and amazing, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for us, como over and over and over again, it's more como Uh, let's say, fuerte, el sentido de, de fighting against, but at the same time, enjoy being me, you know? Mm -hmm. Because we are doing hip hop, a lot of white people doing hip hop, a lot of white feminists, white teenagers doing hip hop, mm -hmm. and the people are buying that shit, that music, and praising. So when you think in Latin people, don't think in white people. It's the same <coughs> shit. It's the same shit, free uh, thing in black, Latin people. We are there, we've been there. So, I don't know, I think it's the white people's responsibility to change that shit. Mm -hmm. Because we are still here, we are still here, make music, make art, feeling amazing, uh, feeling desire, everything, you know, breathing. So, thinking about it, when you want to buy music, buy, whatever, uh, choose whatever, look in the source. Who made that shit? Mm -hmm. Who is the people behind the world, behind the camera? Who? Como, no sé, uh, by movies, everything. Mm -hmm. Questioning everything, because mm -hmm. at the end, if you only buy from white people, it's the same money, como, it's the same. If that money is ours, <laughs> it's not yours. O sea, you take from us. <laughs> so, so, solo para clarificar, eh, la apropiación de queer, como he visto con CUIEG, que UIEG, conozco un poco del trabajo de uh -huh, Pedra, uh -huh. de Q, queer, Q de culo, y cómo se, se puede también apropiar de esa palabra, ¿no? Para mí yo creo que lo que hacen por allá, por Cuba y en Latinoamérica, es como no, no escribir como queer en inglés, sino C U I R y tratar de traducir en español un término que, que, que contenga people who are no lesbian or gay, you know? Entonces, eso usa mucho queer en Cuba es kind of new, pero a lot of people are using, a lot of people are against that because they say from here because they say queer is white, I don't believe that. Okay. Nothing mm. is white, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, entonces, for me, it's very, very proud when, when I know people from Latin America and Cuba and, um, or country where we speak Spanish, como appropriated the term queer, because for me, I think it's different. We need to, at some point, make the difference, mm -hmm. como say, mm, I know that, I know that, and this. Como tú decías, esperamos una society donde we don't need nothing, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. esperamos, pero. Mm -hmm. In the meantime. In the meantime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. I would like yeah. to say only one thing that I cannot, if you use the term queer in the academia, in the university, please, before, say thank you to Gloria Zaldúa. Mm. Yeah. She was responsible to bring the term to the universities and nobody mm -hmm. talk about her yeah. in this yeah. term. So yeah. I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like, oh, I'm just going to say, I, I think that uh, thinking about the work that my collective does, um, I don't know, language is so tricky, it really can fail us um, in many ways. And also, I think the issue, the term that we have the most problems with is POC. 
mm-hmm. and feeling like black and indigenous mm-hmm. folks are getting lost in that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so for us, it's really intentional to say we are doing QT BIPOC or queer mm-hmm. and trans black and brown folks mm-hmm. uh, brown, uh, work because we're trying to find ways of centering yeah. black and indigenous folks mm-hmm. in a city that is yeah. constantly trying yeah. to like, mm-hmm. right? Um, and also I think that, you know, having worked with, I love the queer youth, like having worked with them and the ways that they just take words and <laughs> concepts and just like put their fucking swag on it, you know, like they come in and they're identifying as all different types of things or different pronouns. I mean, it's beautiful, you know, because language is, is meant to be played with. I think the idea that language is something that can only have one meaning or like, um, you know, is, is a colonial construct yeah. right mm-hmm. and so of course we can take something mm-hmm. and like yeah. it is ours of course to like take queer and play with it inappropriate in ways that feel good mm-hmm. for us because we just have that sauce you know <laughs> <laughs> um but also i think it's like listening to the community like what so what are they call, like what are we calling ourselves what are they calling each other like it's it's if queer as a term is a thing that is connecting us to organize, yeah. to like be in community, then like, sure, let's adopt it and know that it's something that is a little uncomfortable, tricky. Um, but then like, you know, let's just sit, let's use it as a way to come together, to listen to each other and yeah. figure out mm-hmm. what the future looks like. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I, we're at time. Do you want to? Okay, no, go ahead. White queers. If you're not questioning racism, you're not queer. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I think that we're at time. We're at one, so it's time. I know that other people have questions. You probably have like five. Um, but um, before we give them a round of applause, just one more time, where are you in the program next? You want to just say say that you're performing and where and what? Yeah, uh, on Sunday in the yeah, at uh, 7 38 p.m. Okay. so so. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a hair lounge. Mm-hmm. Arrive at seven, so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm performing tonight at uh, the Vortex Theater uh, at 8.30. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, Sahara Lounge, a, a ver, 8 to 8.30. Mm-hmm. 8 to 8.30. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> um, tomorrow at 8 in the tent. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thank you, everyone. <laughs>